one in this video will discuss about squamous cell carcinoma so in this video the squamous cell carcinoma which we are discussing is mostly pertinent to skin only okay so you can uh, actually the squamous cell carcinoma can originate anywhere it can be in lungs in cervix so here we are just talking about our skin okay the basic morphology will remain the same only so what is squamous cell carcinoma here it is a tumor of epidermal keratinocytes so you have this squamous lining epithelium this is the normal lining epithelium you can see there are various layers of skin there is stratum basalis to stratum corneum so what is squamous cell carcinoma it is the tumor of epidermal keratinocytes which can exhibit various degree of differentiation and it somewhat resembles that of squamous cell of the epidermis depending upon the differentiation okay so squamous cell carcinoma can be it can be very well differentiated that is well differentiated will mean it will very well uh, look like squamous cells okay you can very easily see certain features of squamous cells then you have moderately differentiated and then you have poorly differentiated we will discuss all this in detail so in this video we will go through the pathogenesis the risk factors then the morphology of the squamous cell carcinoma so the what is uh, mostly the squamous cell carcinoma is seen in older age group more commonly in the men and is mostly seen over sun exposed site why because the main pathogenesis behind uh, scc is your uv exposure so the uv ray damage is the more, uh, most common pathogenic uh, pathogenesis behind scc Uh, squamous cell carcinoma is also known as SCC. Okay, so sometimes this uh, terminology is also used. So the most common cause is the DNA damage, which is induced by exposure to UV light. So the tumor incidence will be proportional to the degree of lifetime sun exposure. Second thing uh, is seen that the SCC is also common in certain person with immunosuppression. So immunosuppression because of any drugs which patient is taking like chemotherapy, okay, after organ transplantation or in any uh, case of chronic immunosuppression. Why? Because of immunosuppression, the body is susceptible to certain viruses. So the viruses like HPV. Now HPV is known for SCC. Okay, in uh, either in cervix or in skin. So this is the oncogenic virus. Okay, so these virus can um, cause uh, mutations in the keratinocytes, which can lead to further development of SCC. Now going to little bit of molecular. We will just touch the molecular in this. So what happens is normally the, if there is any DNA damage. Okay, now the DNA damage can be due to your UV exposure. Okay. uh then you can have chronic irritation that it can cause uh, dna damage so this dna damage is sensed by something known as kinases there is kinase atm there is a kinase atr so these kinases they uh, sense these are the checkpoint kinases they sense the dna damage and then they report this to tp53 now this p53 is a tumor suppressor gene tumor suppressor gene so it is supposed to take action of that dna damage so what it does is sometimes it causes cell cycle arrest so that the repair can take place at uh, during that time if the dna repair doesn't take place then it sends the cell for apoptosis that is kills the cell sometimes even the cell goes into senescence so accordingly the dna damage is managed but in certain patients in which p53 is mutated so what will happen is all these things will not take place the dna damage will continue and such cells will replicate and uh, lead to production of cancer so uh, this we already discussed that the dna damage is sensed by atm and atr then it goes to p53 it arrests the cell in a g1 phase of cell cycle causes apoptosis if damage is beyond the repair and if the protective function of p53 are lost then your mutation will be passed to further daughter cells now risk factors to development of scc are some industrial carcinogens such as tars oil 
chronic ulcers like chronic diabetic ulcers okay uh, wherever chronic irritation is there uh, due to any cause scc can develop old burn scars then ingestion of arsenicals uh, sorry for the font size uh, ingestion of arsenicals then ionizing radiation then tobacco okay so i already told you that in any case of chronic irritation scc can develop so what does tobacco betel nut uh, chewing uh, does in the oral cavity it leads to chronic irritation okay so that is again a method of development of scc then your mut mutation is always there the tp53 mutations now going to the morphology now morphology how does the uh, grossly it look like scc so you can see over here so lesions they are often nodular okay you can see the uh, the lesion is well circumscribed nodular sometimes ulceration in the center can also be seen so this is the picture of your scc so it is red well mostly sharply defined red scaling plugs if there is more uh, advanced then you can see nodule also and sometimes ulceration can also be there so this is the gross morphology in the patient how you will see it then going to the microscopically when this part is excised okay and sent to you in histopathology so how it looks like so it will depend upon the differentiation of scc the scc can be well differentiated moderately and poorly so here you can see this is a normal squamous lining epithelium here you can see the squamous lining epithelium is going down into the dermis okay so this uh, it is going down into the dermis so you have atypical squamous cells that have crossed their basement membrane and is now going into dermis that is it is invasion invasion is present and if you see such cells so cells will vary cells will have large nuclei you can have prominent nucleoli so uh, let's see in the so how does it look like tumor will be composed of atypical polygonal cells you will have squamous cells they can be arranged in lobules nests and they will have a large area of keratinization keratin pearls can be present then single cell keratinization known as dyskeratosis can also be present so if this is your squamous cell this is a polygonal cell so okay so the tumor the, the cells will be atypical okay they will nc ratio will increase they will have perm, uh, a, a prominent nucleoli also present okay sometime inside the cell you can have keratinization that is known as single cell keratinization then in the uh, his, uh, in the microscopy you can see presence of keratin pearls so this is keratin pearl this is production of keratin whirling of keratin which is seen this is known as keratin pearl so this is also seen this is a characteristic finding of a squamous cell carcinoma now the individual cells are pleomorphic they can have high nc ratio moderate cytoplasm pleomorphic vesicular nucleus mitotic fingers can also be seen so here you can see this is your normal lining epithelium in the atypical lining epithelium and here you can see tumor cells are present okay so tumor cells are present in the dermis and the cells they are pleomorphic they have high nc ratio nc ratio means the nucleus is larger than the cytoplasm uh, the area of cytoplasm the cytoplasm in this case is eosinophilic okay because of because it is squamous squamous uh, cytoplasm is eosinophilic then here uh, then there is a keratin pearls can also be seen this is a characteristic of well differentiated see so how beautiful keratin pearls are. there's whorls of squamous cells squamous cells are present in nests lobules whorls okay and uh, inside them uh, there is keratin production this is known as keratin pearl multiple keratin pearls are seen if multiple keratin pearls are seen okay if you can see very well keratinization this is mostly your well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma then 
second is your moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma here you can make it out that it is squamous cell carcinoma because there is little bit of individual cell keratinization present the intracellular bridges are present what is intracellular bridges it is characteristic again of your uh, squamous cell if you have two cells of squam squamous cells they adhere to each other with the help of bridge so it, sometimes in the microscopy you can see presence of bridges in between the cells so there's a intercellular bridges which are present in case of squamous cell carcinoma then you have poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma then here in this case what will happen the cells will be very bizarre so here in this case you can see such a bizarre nucleus is present so you can see the nucleus is hyperchromatic okay and the uh, degree of keratinization will fall down so this is poorly differentiated scc according to the differentiation other variants are also there of scc microscopically they are mostly for reporting pathologists only so uh, like verrucous carcinoma this is a very well differentiated type of uh, scc okay it's as well differentiated that it appears like a normal skin only okay uh, then acantholytic spindle spindle like as the name suggests the cells will be little bit spindle than the squamous cell carcinoma but on if you go for ihc okay ihc is diagnostic in case of carcinoma then you know with particularly which um, cell is this so on ihc it come out to be squamous okay this is the spindle uh, variant of uh, squamous cell carcinoma then is adenosquamous then is desmoplastic in which um, uh, fibrosis is increased okay so these are the variants so this was all about the squamous cell carcinoma to end the video on a good note as you start to walk on the way the way appears so be optimistic thanks for watching keep studying thank you